Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday, and that means Okta, on-chain technical analysis, and so much more. 48 nuggets today, so let's dive in. A lot of ground to cover real fast. But first of all, thank you to everybody cover real fast in the chat. But first, mods and everybody else. Keeping us safe, toxicity, and scammer-free. I love that. So let's jump in, and what a year it has been. So let me see. <laughs> This is called Exponential Times. I'm going to talk about some of the stuff coming out regarding the impact of the spot ETF and the money flow and running some new numbers, which came from Michael Sunshine. The impact, $30 trillion running through some different scenarios and the impact on things like MicroStrategy. We'll look at some stocks. We'll look at some rebounders. And it shows you every 30 days, this huge alpha to be made. You just got to be patient and wait for the signal. Uh, let me see, market cap, 1.6 trillion. Bitcoin is 42.4, 42.3, thereabouts. Market dominance 51.2. ETH is under 2200. Everybody's losing patience with ETH, including me. I've lost patience, actually. I lost it before. Anyway, let's just jump in. And uh, this is edutainment. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to get smarter. If you're happy the way you are, that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, the good news. This is an interesting one today because I have no ugly news. And only a tiny bit of bad news. The rest is good. So it's like, this has never happened before where I couldn't find ugly news. But let's jump in with the good. So first of all, crypto market over the last seven days, uh, you can see here, um, very few names actually beat Bitcoin this week. Uh, Binance, Solana, Cardano, Avalanche, ICP, Shiba, VeChain, Injective, uh, Cosmos, but the rest didn't. So uh, it's been a strong week for Bitcoin. Now let's look at some numbers in terms of US dollar, what I call fiat melting ice cube terms. You can see here, Bitcoin is up 2.37% for the week and it's been volatile. It's been all over the place, down to 40K, up to 40 above 43K, etc. It has everybody in a bit of a uh, whiplash. Uh, Solana is up over 5%, Avalanche up over 5%, uh, Cardano up 4%. Uh, Binance up 2.6%, Ethereum down 2.36%, unreal. So things are just all over the place. The things that you'd expect to be up are not. Anyway, let's talk about the halving clock. It's getting close. T minus 120 days. That goes fast. We're talking four months or less. If you're in Australia watching this video, it's 119 days. So it's coming quickly and everybody's getting anxious and everybody's getting excited. And nobody's selling. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's look at the crypto market in general. Ever since uh, I started doing this eight weeks ago, you can see the market cap went from 1.3 to 1.68 trillion dollars. Users, 5.6 million to 6.8 million. Uh, transfers, transactions, whatever you want to call them, 40 million to 56 and a half million transactions. So crypto is being much more adopted, which is great for the space. And a big thank you as well. Oh, I got a shout out to Sir Winston, you rock and Piper, amazing people uh, from all over the world. Really appreciate it. We put everything to good work. Let's talk about fear and greed up to 73. Also a very bullish sign. I think it was at 64, 65 last week, if I recall. And that's a nice big bounce. But we don't want things to get too greedy too early. Things are already moving way too fast, too early. Let's look at global liquidity. This is stunning. And we've been watching this very carefully. Global liquidity added a quarter of a trillion dollars in weeks. We'll talk more about trillions as well. But again, I'd say in three or six months, that'll be $100 trillion in global liquidity. And that will float all boats up in the air. So be on those boats, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be afraid. Don't be holding cash because your cash will go down in value as global liquidity goes up. That's just how it works. And now this is kind of the... The trigger for the title today, and it's called $30 trillion impact. Let's look at why I came up with that name. So Grayscale CEO Michael Sunshine uh, believes, and he said this on CNBS, he believes that the spot ETF for Bitcoin will unlock $30 trillion worth of advised wealth for Bitcoin. Now, it's important to understand the term advised wealth. These are financial advisors who advise people what to do with their money. Anybody who, unless they've been living under a rock for the past 14 years, knows they need 
a piece of this exponential asset called Bitcoin. And the world is excited and it's all over the press, all over the BS finance news, BS mainstream media news. But it's good because it gets people excited. Now, as usual, I like to take a number and then model it out. So I know that there's 39 trillion across the top 11 money runners on the world. That includes BlackRock and Nomura and Deutsche Bank and Fidelity and all those guys. I've added it all up before. But let's just take Michael Sunshine's $30 trillion and play with some multipliers. So what I did was I assumed, and again, the time frame of how much of this will be allocated to Bitcoin is really up in the air. I don't know if it's six months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months, 24 months, but definitely within three years, there will be at least a half of 1% allocated to Bitcoin. Okay. Now, if Michael Sonnenschein is right, and that's 30 trillion, half of 1% of 30 trillion is $150 billion dollars you multiply that by my ia multiplier people always ask where to get the ia multiplier well i calculated it after tesla bought bitcoin i looked at the impact of their one and a half billion and calculated it back the impact on bitcoin price and that gave me a 21x multiplier if money flows in and by the way bitcoin's a lot scarcer now than when tesla bought bitcoin so that 21 multiplier could actually th theoretically be 31 or 50 at this stage but anyway let's move on with this assuming it does come in but more gradually than the tesla buy that adds a 3.15 trillion to the impact on bitcoin market cap you divide that by the number of tokens which i have is 15 million because some are lost and dormant forever etc that means the impact on bitcoin price is 210,000 ju just from half of one percent of 30 trillion you add that to the current price you get 253 thousand dollars or a quarter of a million dollars per bitcoin and the roi from today's price is 743 <laughs> percent a lot of people calling for a quarter of a million so this is not beyond the realm of possibility and this is only only money from financial advisors only in the u.s think about that we're not talking about the rest of the world we're just talking about the united states which is four percent of the population <laughs> so when you when you break down these numbers they are completely realistic and in fact let's go a bit further let's imagine one percent what would that do well that would take the price up to four hundred sixty three thousand dollars per bitcoin nearly half a million bucks and heaven forbid five percent allocation of funds and many people many people like the ray dalios of the world and other great investors believe five percent is is prudent to invest into bitcoin if, if these money runners throw 5% into Bitcoin, the price goes above $2 million, uh, which is a 7,000% ROI from here. Again, that may take a long time for that to happen. Either way, quarter of a million, half a million, two million, it's crazy numbers. So that's exciting. Speaking of Grayscale, let's look at their discounts. We check in on these every week. Thank you again, Piper. The discounts rose up fell down rose up again fell down again now they're at eight percent exactly on the nose for the gbtc fund and eth is 13 percent that was hot for a while i did say i would get out of uh a little position that i had in there when it hit 10 percent. i never got that close but anyway left the building no matter it doesn't matter anyway so let's go let's talk about michael sailor um he a lot of people are concerned okay when this spot etf comes is that going to impact MicroStrategy? Well, first of all, he said a couple of things. He said the significance of the spot ETF from Michael Saylor, C, the executive chairman, I think he is MicroStrategy right now, emphasized this will be the biggest event to hit Wall Street since the introduction of the S&P 500 ETF 30 years ago. Forget the gold ETF. He thinks it's bigger than that. And Saylor explained that mainstream investors, both individual and institutional currently lack high bandwidth compliant channel for investing in Bitcoin. This spot Bitcoin ETF will solve this and it will lead to a demand shock for Bitcoin, increase the demand, and this will coincide with supply shock coming up with the halving of going from 900 to 450 Bitcoin per day. And he also said that because MicroStrategy operates as a company that can leverage its cash flow, imply intelligent leverage uh, to increase Bitcoin holdings. I call it financial jiu jitsu. 
He said he's not worried about the spot ETF having an impact on MicroStrategy stock at all. In fact, there'll still be another opportunity, even a bigger opportunity for them too, because they don't charge fees. And we don't like fees. Let's look at Bitcoin monthly returns. So far, we're up 11.4% in December. It's not crazy. The last week was around 12.3% or something. Or no, 8.6. And the week before is 12.3. I don't know, but it's, it's still up. But we still have that last 12 days. The last 12 days before year end for things to happen. And people are sniffing this spot ETF out. I'll share a piece of news in a minute. Just another person that is actually well in tuned with the, what's it called? The Vine channel, Grapevine in Wall Street. And here's everything from all the money runners too. And he has an idea on the spot ETF launch date as well. Let's talk about some on-chain stuff because it is Okta. This is from the team at Glassnode, the magnificent work that they do. And basically 90% of Bitcoin now of supply is in profit. So if you are not making money on Bitcoin, you're in the minority of 10%. So that means you, you didn't layer in, you didn't buy the dip, etc. Uh, very few people are in loss on Bitcoin, and it's only getting better as we go forward from here. However, people are still playing with leverage. And there was a tiny spike of Bitcoin yesterday, the last 24 hours. It took price above 43K, and it liquidated a ton of money. About 56 million of shorts on Bitcoin got liquidated. The way that works is... People get into a position, say, shorting Bitcoin at 42K. It spikes to 43K. They get liquidated. Now, what's interesting is the opposite thing happened on Ethereum. People that were long Ethereum <laughs> got wrecked too because it went down and they got liquidated to the tune of 37 million. So the Bitcoin shorts lost 56. The ETH longs lost 37. You can't make this up. Anyway, um, that's just what happened. So be careful with leverage. And if you play with it, make sure you have that big fat cushion to fall back on so you won't be wiped out. Do not get into a leverage trade when your margins are razor thin in terms of how much you can absorb in terms of loss. Very important, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's look at some more on-chain stuff. Eurodate Peaks, Alts Beat Ethereum. That's kind of my little title today. If you look at the purple, they are altcoins. And remember... 98 to 99% of all coins are complete trash. But despite that, they still beat Ethereum so far uh, since, 20, since January 2022, which is stunning. Oh, hang on. January 2023. Got that number wrong. Um, of course, the king Bitcoin is up 172% uh, year to date at the peak. Now it's up about 160, so it's like 12% off the peak, but still really good. The Ethereum peak performance year to date was 98%. And it's off of that too. And the altcoin sector is up and ahead of where we are right now. The alts have been running kind of since October pretty well. We'll dig more into that in a minute. Now, I always say, and I'm beginning to see this echoed back on FinTwit, Twitterverse, whatever you want to call it, X. But I always say we're up higher and earlier than ever before. Great little chart from Equinometrics shows this. We are orange, all right? Now, the previous cycles, the green is the bear market of the first halving cycle. Technically, it was the second, but nobody knew what the first was, so forget that. Then you have the blue, the bear market of the second halving cycle and the recovery. And we are absolutely way higher, way sooner, to the tune of over 350 days than these previous cycles. So, I reckon... 300 days from now, we could break an all-time high, which again would be 150 days earlier than previous cycles. This time is different. That's all I've been saying. I'm a broken record all year. But it's important to be consistent in investing. Have a thesis. Stick to it. If you start jumping around the place, you lose. Make your plan. Execute. Very important. And if this stuff happens, yeah. We're going to go a lot higher, a lot sooner, because it's so much harder this time around. And that's the point I've been trying to make all year. And a big thank you to on-chain data that helps us figure this out. Next, let's look at this as well. This is super interesting. This is kind of the cycle midpoint comparison. And we are above the true market mean price from here on in. What I mean by that is the team at Glassnode 
created a really cool metric. They call it coin time economics, which is the true market mean price, basically the cost basis of the average investors in Bitcoin. Now, once we get into this bull run, which we are in this bull run, never again until the next bear will the price of Bitcoin fall below that true mean market price. And that is very bullish. Last time uh, was 30K was the last major area of support before the capitulation sell-offs culminating in collapse of things like FTX, etc. And the coin time, or the, the, it is, yeah, coin time economics model, which is really cool, reflects that actual cost basis. And we are far, far above that. Again, reflecting the other chart that said 90% of Bitcoin holders are in profit, only 10% are in loss. Now, in the rumorville, the grapevineville, Mike Novogratz, who is well-connected to all things Wall Street, reiterated that he expects Security Exchange Commission to approve an ETF for Bitcoin before January 10th. January 10th is kind of like the final date for it to happen. He thinks it's going to happen before. And if you look at all the activity happening out there now, you've got ARK 21 shares just got their ticker released. It's now up. I think it's ARKB is their ticker. We've got the IBTC or BTCI, whatever from uh, BlackRock and they're all out there. All the tickers are out there and they don't get released unless this thing is actually going to happen. All right. So, oh, and a lot of people are afraid. It's like, well, when everybody thinks something's going to happen, it's not going to happen. No. When, when there is such a predominance of data and information, you know, it's going to happen. It has to happen, especially when you look at the players involved in the actual process too. Now, another cool little chart here from K33. This is the open interest relative to circulating supply. <laughs> this is nuts. Uh, there's a thing called Ordi, Ordinals, has an extremely high open interest compared to its market cap. 24%, which is more than 10 times that of Bitcoin, is open interest. Bitcoin's at 2.2%. This is at 24%. Uh, Bonk and Celestia also have huge high open interest rate to market cap ratios. 18.1% and 8.7% respectively. And uh, the funding rates have been kind of very high for these things, a little bit higher than, of course, normal. And the average yield for the past week is about 10%, uh, which is below, I think, neutral of about 10.5%. But remember, Ordi and Injective also have higher uh, funding rates too. And what else? I think Sol is a 2.9%. Um, open interest relative to circulating capital, injective 4.8%, 2.7% uh, for ETH and 2.2% for Bitcoin. So it's kind of funny when you have things with such high open interest rates, expect extreme volatility. That's just the nature of the beast because the people playing in it want that volatility. So be careful out there. Again, playing with leverage. Second warning of the day. Let's look at money flow, digital asset investment products. So minor outflows ending a beautiful 11 week run of inflows and trading activity remained well above the year average totaling 3.6 billion for the week but it suggests maybe a tiny amount of profit taking <coughs> from uh, certain funds which is normal normal behavior let's look at the breakdown uh, you can see sol is still smoking uh, bitcoin lost 32.8 million uh, eth 4.3 million solana took in 10.6 million. And this is the black hole I've been talking about as well. All year, it's happening. All the money is being sucked into one asset. XRP got 2.7 million. Uh, head scratch to that. And the card on our 3 million. Um, so you can see here as well, money flowing out of the two big motherships, Bitcoin and Ethereum, into the altcoins because alt season is happening earlier. Everything's happening earlier. Everything is front running everything. Just the nature of this year, which is awesome as well. Let me check on everything here. Make sure everybody can hear me. Hey, hey, Mr. Hammer and everybody else. So let's look at old season index. We're kind of steady at the 50 mark. No big shakes there. Um, that means half of old coins are outperforming Bitcoin uh, and vice versa. And let's look at old versus Bitcoin. Not only are exactly half outperforming them, but they're really really outperforming them. And it's probably driving some of the Bitcoin max. He's mad. But if you look here, you got a new one in the top 50. It's called HNT. It's another Solana ecosystem black hole play. It's called Helium. 
And uh, number two is Injective. Number three, Avalanche. Number four, IMX. Number five, Buimax. And number six, Solana. And then ICP. You'll notice here in the top over the last 90 days, many of these things are brand new. Many of these things are brand new to the top 50. And they're completely smashing it. The other thesis I had is new stuff will replace old stuff. That's also happening, reflected here. Now, speaking of HNT, this is completely bonkers. Uh, Helium, it's another, as I said, Solana ecosystem play. It's on fire. By the way, that's my list of Solana tokens on the right-hand side that I monitor all the time. And I'm building a portfolio out of them, just a little play portfolio. I'm experimenting with some new ideas. And this HNT, which I do not own, <laughs> is up 600% in 46 days. Wow. It's crazy how much some of these things are actually going up. And other ones in there are like things like Radium, Orca, Shadow, Dark, Atlas, um, IoT. They're all really solid, which is kind of the new Ave, are really coming to the fore real fast as well. So, you know, good to see you. Now, let's look at the top 50 uh, or the top three winners and losers over the last week. Injective, Stacks, and Ave. Stacks is on fire because of this ordinals, inscription stuff, and Bitcoin. But year to date, look at this number, 3,000% for Injective. Uh, Stacks nearly 500% and Ave 100%. Ave was a great name in the past, but again, I think it is a little bit older technology. And then Caspa down 11%, Elrond down 9%, and Rune down 9%. Remember, after a colossal run, things mean revert. They come back down to earth. It's just the nature of the business. Now, this is uh, there's a lot of frustration now with the ETH performance. Uh, the top three market cap over the last week. Bitcoin up 5% to 43 again. This is a chart from K33. It was probably taken as a snapshot last night. Uh, so it's a few hours old. Binance up 2%, beating ETH only 1% for the week. And again, still, as per all year, underperforming Bitcoin, which has a lot of people very frustrated. But we all know the reason for that as well. Let's look at uh, fees. This is an extremely interesting analysis. What we have is access to all daily fees for all chains. And I put together a little snapshot of the top ones. But the interesting thing to note is fees are exploding. Like literally avalanche fees are 10 bucks a transaction right now, which is way higher than normal. It's nearly in the ETH territory. But that's also driving a lot of fees per day per chain. So the top earner per chain is Bitcoin, 24 million in daily fees. And guess who gets that? The miners. That's why we play with the miners too here. We chase the alpha. We don't care the form. Ethereum, 10.4 million. Avalanche, 5.4 million. Just 5 million shy of Ethereum. And that is a crazy amount of fees for Avalanche. Tron, just shy of a million bucks. Uh, Binance, 780k. Binance used to make millions every single day. Now they're making under a million, which is really coming down. Arbitrum, 197k. Optimism, 119. And uh, Solana, 119. And then Stark. And then you go all the way down to the bottom. You see Flow made three bucks. ICP made 30, despite ICP doing very well last week. Algrand made $200. Yeah. So again, if you're not making fees, you need to pivot to something else like a central bank digital currency. That's what many of these names will probably do. Now let's look at some charts of these fees and how big they are. So first of all, this is just a, a linear chart and it's really hard to understand what's happening, but it gives you an idea of how big the top three are, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Avalanche compared to the rest. The question is, is that sustainable? Can Avalanche charge 10 bucks and be a global chain? I think not. Another view is log scale. And here you see a different perspective of how things can drop off. You look at the price index on the left is up to 10 million, going down to $10. And that's where certain things kind of play. And the log scale tells a very different picture. If you're not making at least say $50,000 a day, that's my cutoff point. It's probably a chain that may not make it. And that's just the harsh reality out there because fees rep represent two things, one adoption and two, the ability to keep the lights on too. Um, let's talk about other news, news as well. Circle, uh, the Euro, which is the European currency, uh, now launched on Solana. And I noticed this actually pop up as an option on some of the DEXs that I use, which is really cool. It's also very important as well. Now, 
to think in terms of this now stable coins can facilitate real time extremely fast within one second and for essentially free cross-border transactions eliminating intermediaries reducing fees to nothing and destroying the traditional banking system this if the european banks are watching what's happening with solana and usdc and the euro and the ability to transfer it share it anywhere pop it anywhere you know if you're working in europe and you got family back in the philippines or ecuador or wherever you can kick the money back that way at no charge so the western unions of the world toast banks toast the world is real time and frictionless and that's what's huge about this actual news anyway more of that to come in addition if they couldn't get any more sold out the saga phone uh, there's a company called acs it's called access protocol they just decided to give every phone owner a hundred thousand in acs tokens that's worth today actually it's probably even higher now uh, last time i checked it was worth 250 bucks guarantee you the price of acs has probably gone up to all owners of the solana centric saga phone and they were looking at what happened with bonk and they want some of that adoption and action too so now this phone has become a way of driving adoption on chains <laughs> and if you add up the cost of you know i think the bonk on the phone is worth 550 bucks the phone costs 599 dollars now you get another 250 bucks of acs you're going to get some solent maybe some parcel maybe some other names as well coming in and just air dropping onto the phone this phone will i mark my words you'll be able to pull at least two to three maybe four thousand dollars of value from this phone for 599 which is just it's a genius move by the whole salon team and to drive adoption and community as well speaking of dominance and adoption again i don't normally talk about dominance but this is an important dominance chart is solid dominance and you can see it's just going up and to the right it's above two percent it's heading to three percent and that means if it does get to three percent and the car the crypto market cap stays the same that will take the price of Solana north of 120 dollars so watch this space carefully i thought that was an insane target a year ago when you were buying Solana eight bucks ten bucks twelve bucks for quite a few days for it to do a 10x or more 15x in a year yeah, it's crazy but that's just what's happening and that's why we're in crypto because it's crazy but it's also very dangerous make sure you're in the right assets now let's switch to some other markets let's look at bitcoin nasdaq correlation this is the rolling 90-day chart and you can see right now bitcoin is up 53 percent compared to the nasdaq is only up seven percent over the last 90 days last week this was up 73 percent versus nasdaq six percent so things change very quickly as well but again that peak of 90 days ago last week was like the perfect pico top but it's coming down but going back up but you don't see it reflected here in this correlation chart now i did say as well back in mid-december 2022 my target for the s p 500 for year-end 2023 was 4600 i said the first half will be bumpy that was correct it was very bumpy second half would be strong it was but at the time um that was a 21 percent gain and i was wrong i was sandbagged too much because s p is nearly at 4800 dollars, and we're not even at the year end yet and we are close to a new all-time high and this is killing it's killing all the bears all the macro experts all the people expecting a 70 percent market correction and now we're breaking you all time highs. Again, it's called money, liquidity, floats all boats. It's just how it works. Anywho, uh, let's talk about Tesla for a second. This is an interesting chart just to show, you know, people talk about, oh, the EVs are slowing down and everything else. Well, no, if you look at countries that are really embracing the electrification revolution, look at Iceland. Nearly half of all new cars sold in Iceland in the month of November are Teslas. Norway. 16 percent ireland 16 percent denmark 15 percent hong kong 13 and percent and the rest of the world will grow into these numbers tesla sales in the u.s only make up four percent of car sales okay we're at the early part of the s curve that's why it's such a great time to be in this stock because it's all about to go but again it's not a car company it's so much more than that but that's very interesting and remember as all the other ev makers the volkswagens 
the General Motors, the Fords, they are retreating from the space and they're going to focus on diesel and gasoline burners, petrol burners. Um, there's one company that's going to take over because you cannot stop an S curve once it starts. That's what few people realize. Uh, this is funny. Also, for this is from Electric uh, Magazine, there's somebody building a. <laughs> it's like a floating pontoon that will turn your Cybertruck into an actual boat. You just drive it up onto it and you put it on the stand, and the wheels, the four wheel drive wheels, run propellers on the boat. It's insane. It's going to be fun. I would love to get one of those, actually. It'd be crazy, especially if you live, imagine somewhere like Vancouver and you've got to go across to different islands and stuff, or maybe in Asia or Greece, Greece, where there's hundreds of islands. That's what you need. So anyway, let's look at the stock market the last seven days. A lot of green, some big movers, uh, Tesla up. Uh, actually, right now it's up 9% because it shot up right before I streamed. Amazon, 4%. Google, nearly 4%. Microsoft down. Apple, kind of flattish. NVIDIA, another big week. It broke through 500 yesterday. Took a little bit of a breather, but coming back. But there is one stock that has been super interesting, and that is this one, Enphase. A lot of people were saying, oh, you know, it did. It this this is the reason I share this chart is it's a, a trade that I'm in, and sometimes a stock will fall, and it will get completely oversold. That's when you run into a building building if the fundamentals are pretty much the same. Once you dig into the reasons for the way the stock market interprets an earnings report and you discover it's just a small blip like last week's show is about the tesla bl or the bitcoin blip that's what this is so i drew a little smiley face with teeth on it for you the crazy thing is enphase it's up 88 percent in just 23 days since that buy signal here and there you are off to the races it was incredible you could buy that thing under 80 bucks now it's 135 dollars and that's how anybody thinks they've lost the opportunity to make money in the markets or they've missed the bull market, missed the bull run. There's always money to be made in the markets. You just need to be be there like a sniper in the woods. Anyway, 48 nuggets in today's video. We now have nearly 10,000 subscribers to our Substack. Of course, most of them are free, but I do urge people even to join for free, help the community writers and everything else. And I write a lot of papers myself that are beyond the slide where you see here. So, and again, there's no way anybody can retain the 48 nuggets, but that's why there's a recap. It'll take you about five minutes to read every single day. And now time for the bad news. There's only one piece of bad news today. And again, thank you everybody for coming. Torkild Johansson in Denmark. Hello, probably in Copenhagen. Cool people in Denmark. And again, thank you to everybody in Denmark for embracing the EV revolution and delivering the vehicles to Sweden because Sweden's on strike. Anyway, U.S. national debt has now increased by $2.42 trillion since the debt ceiling was suspended about six months ago. <laughs> and we're fast approaching $34 trillion. Like, it's very, very difficult for people to understand how much $2.4 trillion, even a trillion dollars is. A trillion dollars will fill a football stadium, okay? And $2.4 trillion will fill two and a half of them. Uh, and that's just a crazy thing. In pallets of $100 bills, it's unthinkable how much money has been printed. And when you consider there's only about 50 million taxpayers in the US. Yes, there's more There's like 130 million people paying tax. But reality is only 50 million people actually pay tax. You divide. Actually, quiz for the, for the community here. Take 34 trillion divided by 50 million. That's how much that there is per taxpayer in the US today. So with that gloomy note, remember to get Bitcoin and other good <laughs> disruptive assets. Thank you to everyone on Patreon. Got my little Patreon mug here. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Okay. And uh, thanks once again for going. Oh, by the way, I need to check on the Bitcoin price while I'm still here. Bitcoin, 42,400. Not bad. And did anything else pop? Well, that OSOL thing is insane. And Tesla moved up $5. Not bad. Thank you to 3,500 people who are watching. Remember this channel. I Just a reminder, I am not a crypto channel. I'm an alpha channel. I'll find ways to make money. So just a word of advice to those is like, oh, just stick to the crypto stuff. Don't do the other stuff. No, this year, all my top three, top three gainers were equities, options on equities. Uh, two of them, of course, were 
Bitcoin proxies. So you could argue they're crypto, but again, everything is related. So wrap your heads around that, everybody. I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you all for coming. Smash the like on the way out so other people can get the good word. Thank you. Have a good night.